Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'll be working through a snowy stream tutorial using just two colours. This is the painting I'll be demonstrating and I'll show you how to build up the painting in stages and the techniques include wet into wet, wet onto dry and the use of masking fluid and splattering techniques. It's quite a long in-depth video and stages are time stamped in the description box below. I'm only going to be using two colours, they're ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. The ultramarine is used very dilutely in the sky and stronger mixes of ultramarine and burnt sienna are used for painting the trees and the tree reflections in the water. I advise you doing some of these colour mixes um, and these swatches before starting the painting to get used to the colour mixes. Try to keep the darks on the warm side. Um, you do this by not adding too much ultramarine or they'll become too blue and too cold looking in the picture. Here I'm showing you how you can subtly change the ultramarine to a more neutral colour by adding just a small amount of the burnt sienna. You often hear about painters talking about knocking back the colour and that is what I'm doing here. I'm knocking back the colour of the ultramarine with just a touch of the burnt sienna. Let's have a look at the burnt sienna now and um, we can see how that can be adjusted with increasing amounts of the ultramarine. These are the mixes that I'll be using throughout the painting. This is the drawing I worked out for the painting. Simplifying all the clutter in a scene that you're viewing or from a photograph of yours is always difficult and takes practice, I know. But this scene is partly from a photograph and partly from my imagination. I've drawn in some foreground trees and then there's a bank of very distant trees. And on this picture I've added in some middle ground trees um, it's quite interesting, isn't it, that you get this sense of distance by showing the main trunks of the foreground trees and then the middle ground trees, you're seeing more of the tops of them and more of the branches on them as well. If you would like this template, there's a link in the description box below and you can get a download from our website. Here you can see my pencil drawing of the scene and I made a start by masking the foreground trees. Well masking fluid can ruin brushes so you have to be very careful with it. Um, I bought a set of masking fluid brushes and I find that those um, do a really good job and I keep rinsing them in soapy water. I'm using the smallest brush in the set to do these little twigs growing out of the base of the trunks and this seems to work quite nicely. You have to use a very light touch or the lines become too thick. Um, the masking fluid here is going to stand for the snow on the twigs.
You can see here I've started putting some masking fluid onto the stones there on the left hand side and I'm just doing some random little marks um, again that will stand for some snow on little twigs in the foreground. And now I'm moving into the um, background here and putting on some, again with a very small brush, um, some marks to stand for snow on these middle distance trees here. Um, make sure that you do some overlapping here so that some of these middle distance trees, the branches actually go behind the foreground trees. That'll help with the sense of distance and perspective, aerial perspective in the final picture. Then just finishing off the, uh, the little stones in the stream. The first stage of the painting is the background sky and distant bank of trees and that's all going to be worked wet into wet. With the watercolour paper at an angle I'm using a dilute mix of ultramarine with just a touch of burnt sienna to paint the sky. I'm adding more water to the mix at the base of the sky and stopping at the top of the snowy banks of the stream. This first wash that we're putting on here of the blue has got to be very wet and um, you might find it easier and you might be happier if you wet the paper first with clean water before applying this sky wash. I then applied a stiffer mix of the burnt sienna with a little ultramarine using downward strokes of the brush and letting the paint run, stopping at the top of the snowy banks of the stream. And now I'm adding a progressively stiffer and darker mix of the two colours, all the time keeping the washers wet into wet. But don't worry if you find paint drying, these washers could have been done wet onto dry, letting the one underneath dry. But I like the soft effect of the wet into wet trees in the distance. It can be a bit tricky working wet into wet like this and you do have to paint pretty quickly. You might want to have a practice first if you're not used to it. A reminder of the mixes here and we're going to use them in the next stage which is painting the distant tree reflections in the stream. Wow. 
Now it is important to work wet into wet on the reflections because then they look much more realistic. So keep your paper at an angle, make sure that the ultramarine first wash is really wet and then what you're going to be doing is dropping similar colours to what you used above into the stream. Try and match the height of those trees in the stream as well. It's not critical, but say you'd got a bank of trees on the left hand side that were really tall, the reflections would come lower down in the stream. That's the sort of thing that I mean. As much as possible let the paint run down using gravity um, but you can help it along in places using downward strokes of the brush and you may want to help it along over those stones in the riverbed there. You may have been wondering about the paper I'm using here, it's Bockingford, £140. Um, I didn't stretch it, um, it may have worked better if I had stretched it, but it's, um, it's performing pretty well. Painting the snow in watercolour is very easy as you just leave the white of the paper and use transparent shadow washes in areas. The shadows can have hard or soft edges and I'm using a combination here with a knocked back very dilute wash of ultramarine. You can see that I'm using a hard edge to separate the snowy banks which I soften them with clean water. The pencil lines separating the banks will be rubbed out and it is this change of tone using the shadow colour which will separate the banks, describe their form and show how they overlap. I'm imagining a diffuse light in this painting so the, um, the tree trunks are not casting any particularly strong shadows 
and I'm putting just some random marks of the knockback blue. Remove the masking fluid when everything is totally dry. The next stage is painting the trees. I'm working wet into wet, varying the colour and the tones of the bark and I'm trying to remember to leave patches of white to stand for snow. You may want to add more texture and detail on the two trees in the foreground. I painted the middle distance trees using a rigger brush, making use of the white lines made by using the masking fluid. The foreground little branches and twigs are also painted using the rigger and the nice stiff mix of the ultramarine and burnt sienna.
put a little bit of detail in the middle ground, some smaller twigs and some patches of brown where soil may be showing through the snow. It's quite subjective how much detail you put in. I wanted to keep this painting quite simple and uncluttered to concentrate on basic techniques. You can see here I did do a little bit of work on the stones which was just putting um, a little bit of the blue shadow underneath and just a thin line of the, um, the brown. could have stopped at this stage but felt the trunks looked too bare and there would have been some branches showing so I did add a few without going too mad. It was time to stop and look at the painting with a mount around it. Again, it could have been left at this stage, but I felt it was dark enough to take a bit of splattering to add some atmosphere. I used white gouache to um, stand for the flakes of snow with just a touch of water. And first of all, I used a toothbrush just to get a light spray and then a round brush. And finally, I just made some larger snowflakes just with the tip of the round brush. So this was the finished painting. If you have a go at this, don't expect to get exactly the same colours as these. I did this painting a few times and they were all different. Here's another one and I like the warmer colour in the distance here. It's all very subjective. I hope you learned something useful from this video and enjoy your painting. See you soon.